Okay, so there are thousands of things you need for nursing school. I'm gonna go over the essentials and what you actually need. And I'll give you a bonus tip at the end. Hey, what's up guys? It's Logan with QRF, or Quick Rescue Force. Today we're gonna go over the essentials of what you need for nursing school. These are what you crucially need to get through nursing school, and they're gonna help you succeed. So let's jump right into it. Number one is a good stethoscope. So you don't need a particularly um, expensive one, like a, a cardiology one from Lippmann, but, and I do recommend Lippmann, that's what I personally use. I use a Lippmann Classic 2, and I have upgraded a few of the accessories to it, which I'll go over in a moment. But basically, there's a big debate on whether or not you need an expensive stethoscope or a cheap stethoscope for nursing school. And I'm on the side of the boat that you need a more expensive one. You don't need to spend your whole life savings on it, but you do need a good one, and here's why. Because as a student, you're gonna be learning different sounds. So not everybody's gonna sound like that mannequin that you listen to in lab. And granted, you could probably use a pretty crappy stethoscope and still listen and hear those sounds because you can turn them up really loud. But in a real life patient, you're not gonna hear everything that clearly and you need a good stethoscope that's going to amplify those sounds to make it easier for you because you are learning what all these sounds mean and what they actually sound like and how to correlate that with the terminology. So you do need a pretty good stethoscope in my opinion, but like I said, you don't need a super expensive one unless you can afford it and that's what you want because then you'll probably have it for the rest of your nursing career or whatever medical career that you end up doing. Um, like I said, I use a Littman Classic 2, but I have a Littman Classic 3 uh, accessories. So you can buy this little accessory kit, which I will link everything I talk about in the description below, and you can check those things out. And that's just what I recommend. You can buy something else if you want, but this is what I've used in my military medical career, in my uh, critical care medical career, and in my nursing uh, student career. So you can get these little Littman stethoscope accessory packs and it comes with, it's about, I spent about 20 bucks on it. It comes with a new diaphragm cover, a new bell cover, new ear tips, and it comes with a few other attachments as well that I don't personally use. But the cool thing is if you have a Classic 2, the Classic 3 attachment makes this an adjustable diaphragm. So what that means is the um, when you increase pressure against your patient or decrease pressure, it changes what you actually hear uh, pitch wise on the patient. So it's actually very helpful and it's a very cheap and inexpensive way to upgrade a already pretty good stethoscope. Number two, the next thing you probably want is a good pair of shoes. So you might be able to tell these are kind of worn in now, um, but you are gonna be, if you haven't worked in healthcare before as like a tech or a CNA or something like that in a hospital setting or even in a uh, nursing home, you probably don't understand why people recommend good comfortable shoes and it's because you're gonna be on your feet for hours and hours and hours on end and if you have uncomfortable shoes it's you might not notice it like within the first few days that you're in clinical but after a while and after the semester you'll you'll regret not spending maybe a little bit extra on shoes and trying on a bunch of different shoes to make sure you get a comfortable one um i use these sketcher sports um, relaxed fit and they're actually very comfortable the soles is very squishy gives you a lot of cushion they're pretty flexible shoes as well and they're very breathable um, which is also very nice I wear black I do recommend that you check your during your orientation for nursing school you'll probably go over your dress code make sure you do follow your dress code but they did sell these I got these at Target but you can probably get them anywhere because they're Skechers uh, and they came in gray, white, black, whatever you need, they probably have. And you can also put in inserts if that's something you wanna do. But moving on to number three, that kind of goes along with that, is socks, a good pair of socks. Now, a lot of people recommend compression socks, and these are compression socks. But a lot of people do recommend compression socks because it helps with blood flow with you standing for maybe t probably 12 hours at a time during your clinical, and I do recommend those. I personally don't wear them all the time. I don't even know where they are, but I do wear um, merino, merino wool socks. So these are very good at wicking off any moisture from sweat in your feet, and they keep your uh, feet really warm as well. 
So I would recommend these more in the winter time because the hospital can get pretty cold and the last thing you want to do is have really cold feet, in my opinion. So moving on to number four is a pair of trauma shears. Now I would, before you go out and buy anything, uh, at least in my nursing program, we had a lab and clinical type of bag that we were issued that I guess we paid for, we weren't issued it. Um, so I guess it's kind of optional, but you probably do want to buy it because it's going to be a cheaper option. And they came with trauma shears and a few other things that I have on this list. So I would make sure that you don't get those already before I go out and buy another pair. Because for trauma shears, you can get pretty expensive trauma shears that they use in a uh, pre-hospital or military setting that you probably don't need in a uh, clinical setting, especially as a nursing student where you're gonna be on a med surge floor. So just a inexpensive pair of trauma shears. And these are good for cutting bandages, opening packages, um, cutting open meds. Uh, it's just very universal and they're a little bit heavier duty than a normal pair of scissors and they look pretty badass. So moving on to number five, we have a blood pressure cuff. Now this is, I'm gonna go along with the same idea as I did with the trauma shears. These might be in your uh, clinical bag as well, so I'll double check. Uh, it's just very basic. You don't need anything expensive. I'm gonna be honest with you, you'll use this in lab when you do your check off for vitals. And then after that, you probably won't use this ever again, especially in the clinical setting. Uh, we had a few people in my clinical group that brought theirs just in case. Um, but in my opinion, I never use this in clinicals and I typically don't use this in my job. Um, I would take this in the field in a military setting, but other than that, you're always gonna have an automatic um, blood pressure cuff available to you and while you do need to know you do need to know how to use one of these it's not mission critical that you have one and carry one with you all the time um, because real nurses don't do that so moving on to number six we have a Kind of a quick reference guide for clinicals and even labs or uh, care plans, which I, I am gonna make a separate video on care plans. Uh, leave a comment below if you would like to see a video on uh, how I do care plans and how I'm successful at getting A's on all my care plans. But this is a quick reference guide. This is called the Pocket Companion Jarvis Physical Examination and Health Assessment. This is the eighth edition. Um, so basically the, the benefit of having something like this is and why I really like it for care plans is it tells you all the terminology because you can't just say um, their pulses felt normal. What's normal? There is a standard definition of what normal is for pulses and it's gonna be in this book. And that's gonna be the same for all your other uh, examinations that you're gonna be doing or assessments that you're gonna be doing on people. So I like to look at that. It's also, uh, sorry, it's also, um, beneficial for clinical because you will be charting and you want it when you chart you want it to sound like it look like you know what you're doing and if you um, use proper terminology it's gonna make you look like a really good student and they're gonna like you there on the floor so and I recommend don't just copy what the nurse that you're under or also has that patient does on their chart because they do this as a job they might get kind of lazy on how they assess people so actually use good terminology during your charting. So number seven, and what I recommend is a practice question book. Now I did a video about this on my Instagram, and this is my favorite book for practice questions. It's called the Saunders Comprehensive Review for the NCLEX RN Examination. So the benefit of this is it teaches you how to answer NCLEX style questions, which is the biggest struggle for all or most nursing students on why they struggle on their exams um, and why nursing school is technically hard for a lot of people is because they don't understand how to answer NCLEX style questions. Now your instructors want you to do well on your NCLEX. So they're gonna focus their chapter and lecture exams on these type of questions. It's not just content retention, but at the same time, a lot of instructors, from what I've noticed, don't teach you how to answer these NCLEX style questions. So it's kind of up to you to learn on how to do that. And the good part about this book and 
pretty much why I bought the book is it goes over a lot in the beginning how to answer every single type, because there's not just one type, every single type of NCLEX question, including select the all, select all that apply. And that's really beneficial. Like this change, I'm not even, I'm not even joking. I went from pretty much struggling in nursing school to passing all my lecture exams in my classes just because of this one book. And that's no joke. It, if anything on this list, this, if you can only get one thing, this is it. Like it also, it divides it into chapters, just like your, your lecture exams. Um, and it gives you important content to remember because you do know, need to know um, content still. Even if you don't know the content that well, you can still, if you know how to answer NCLEX style questions, get away with guessing and you'll probably be pretty good at guessing and get the right answer anyways. So, and that's a, that's a good thing to remember is that I was studying for hours and hours. And I'm talking about like 20 plus hours, like, within a few days for one exam and I was still doing poorly, it's not about studying the content, it's knowing how to answer the questions. You know the content, trust me. You probably already know the content, that's not the difficult part. It also gives you some practice questions in here per chapter, along with answers and rationales. More importantly though, and what I can't stress enough about this book and what you need to do to study, is it has 1,500, maybe a little bit more, practice questions online. It's got a code in the front to use to sign up. 1,500 practice questions that you can do. You can uh, divide it by chapter, you can do practice exams, you can see where you start, see how you end, you, and it's amazing. It's literally a, a game changer in nursing school. And on top of just practice questions, it gives you the right and wrong answers and the rationales on why it's right and wrong. And if you study those rationales, those rationales are, those are literally the key. If you study those, you will get through your nursing exams. I promise. So moving on along, you should probably, which I don't have right here with me because my fiance is borrowing it, is a laptop. So a lot of people still like, at least in my lecture classes, it was about 50-50 on people that like taking notes on their laptop and like taking notes on um, paper. So I personally took notes on a laptop. I just think it's more convenient because you can pull up the PowerPoints if your professor gives you PowerPoints. My professor did. You can pull up the PowerPoints. You can write notes in the margins. Sometimes they add notes to them as well. You can save them. They're much easier to share. So if you have a friend that misses a class or you know if you miss a class and you need your friend to share it with you, it's much easier to send that document over and just go over the notes without having to print it and all that all that kind of stuff or scan it and then email it to somebody. It's just a little bit easier and it's all condensed into one laptop. It's not like a stack of papers um, that you're carrying around all the time. On top of that, I would also recommend something like a, an iPad or really any kind of tablet. I personally use an iPad. Um, I know the iPad Pros, you can, you can use the pen and you can write notes and a lot of people love that. I, I found a few uh, nursing students that also did that and they loved it completely. Way more than a laptop or handwriting notes. But I do think an iPad is very, or a tablet is very convenient to walk around with. So there's sometimes when I would go out um, with my friends or something and I wanted to study during some downtime, a phone's a little bit too small for me to study personally but I didn't want to carry around a laptop. I wanted, to do, I wanted it to be convenient as possible. So I would just carry around an iPad. I think it's very use, uh, uh, versatile and a lot of different things you can use. There's apps to study as well. Um, and I'll go over a video. Uh, leave a comment below if you'd like me to do a video about the different apps I use to study during nursing school and how I um, use those to succeed on my exams. So moving on, and what most nursing, nursing videos stress on is a good planner. Uh, which I agree, you do need a good planner. A lot of people, well, some people like using, uh, you know, their calendar on their phone or their tablet or laptop or whatever. I know Google has a good one that kind of syncs uh, with all your devices al along with Apple as well. They do that. And probably most of you have an iPhone or some kind of smartphone that's uh, Google connected like an Android. But I do recommend, I still use a, a physical planner because I like writing it down and using different colors. 
and all that kind of stuff and it, it made it more concrete and easy to look at um i kind of find making a calendar kind of cumbersome there's a lot of buttons to go through and it's kind of inconvenient it's not really that like it's easy but it's not that quick i find this a little bit more quick i can look at everything a little bit easier and i use just like a little um uh, i don't know what this is like a, a binder clip or some whatever and i use that and i just mark the page so it's really easy to flip to where you're at um so yeah i recommend a planner moving on i recommend and this is gonna seem maybe kind of weird if you don't know what this is but this is like a little let me open this up it's like a little um tupperware container that's divided and basically i really recommend meal prep containers so if you don't know what meal prep is, it's essentially you cooking your food in advance and taking it with you. So like a lunchbox, pretty self-explanatory, right? But there's going to be a lot of time. So I personally, um, between work and school and all my other obligations, I literally almost never came home during the semester. So I really recommend you having some kind of container to make your meals and take them with you because otherwise this, there's a few things that are going to happen. You're going to end up spending a lot of money on getting food out at different restaurants even if it's healthy um like chipotle or something you're gonna end up spending a lot of extra money two you're probably gonna eat way more unhealthy and that's why a lot of nursing students gain a good amount of weight during the first semester is because they're not super prepared by the second semester they're a little bit more they have an idea of what it what they need to do to be more successful so you'll probably end up eating uh, less healthy and it's just convenient to have your food with you because you can eat whenever you have a free moment or even in class a lot of professors don't really care if you eat in class as long as it's not, like smelly food so moving on to our next one I recommend a coffee maker and I know that might sound kind of weird um, but I'm sure most of you already drink something like Starbucks every day or something like that before class. It's a little treat to get you motivated to get up for like an 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. lecture or 5 a.m. clinical. Um, but I do recommend a coffee maker only because you're going to save a lot of money. Um, getting coffee out can, depending on where you get it, can add up pretty easily if you're spending three, four, five, nine dollars per coffee. Uh, versus just using your own coffee maker at home. You're gonna save a lot of money. They're not that expensive. I personally recommend the uh, the Keurig ones where you can put like the, the cups in. It's very easy, very convenient. You really don't have any excuses of it taking too much time. You literally just make sure there's water in there, you put the cup in, you start it, and it's done in about 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end at this point. There's only a few more items I wanna touch on. And one is a pen light. And it's a lot, actually a lot more universal than you think. It's not just for what it's advertised for, looking at pupils. While yes, you will do that in both clinical and lab for your checkoff, it's got a few more um, uses that if you're just creative enough, you can use it. It's pretty much just a flashlight. It's just not as powerful. You can look at wounds, you can look at somebody's nose and their mouth and their ears. It's pretty much can be used for anything, especially because you will uh, in clinical, a lot of people do like their lights off. So it will be easier to assess somebody um, skin with that as well. So I really recommend a pen light. I've actually misplaced mine even though I use it in my everyday career. I have somehow misplaced mine for this video. Uh, so I'll have to get a new one. But they're pretty inexpensive and going back on the lab bag thing that I mentioned earlier in this video, you probably do want to check just to make sure you're not given one. I was for clinical even though it was a pretty crappy pen light. But you can get like a pack of like 20 of them for like 20 bucks probably on, on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description to the best deal I found. Okay, so we got two more things and I'll give you my bonus one at the end. So we have a clipboard. Now, I don't have a clipboard with me. I personally didn't use one, but I wish I did use one. So there's a few benefits. And I realize this mostly in clinical. So in clinical, you will not always have a desk or somewhere hard to write on. And it's nice to have a hard surface you can carry around with you and write down stuff because when you're doing your care plan, at least what I would do is I would have a copy of the uh, paper form of our care plan layout and I would write everything over it while I'm with my patient. And that just makes it easier if you're doing it while you're with your patient or while you notice something, you won't forget and you'll make sure you get accurate data and it will be easier to remember.
I would get one to where you can open it up and put documents inside only because you don't necessarily want other people to see your notes or um, patient information even though everybody you'll be working with is a healthcare provider. Still, if you're taking that home, you probably don't want anyone, not probably you don't want anyone else to see that. So I do recommend a, um, a clipboard with something you can open and put documents in for security purposes. So, lastly, I do want to just touch on this, even though you guys have probably already gotten all this stuff, your textbooks. So there's a big debate on whether or not you should get your textbooks that your school recommends or not, and whether or not you actually use textbooks. Because in a, if you've noticed in a lot of classes maybe you've had before, you don't necessarily use your textbook. Like your instructor's like, yeah, get it, it's on the syllabus, get the textbook, you'll use it as a reference guide. You'll use it all the time, actually. But in reality, you maybe have brought it to class your first day, maybe two or three, and then after that, you never touch the damn thing. And it's kind of just a waste of money. So it's, I don't really know. I would recommend at least renting the book. So here's the caveat is that at least like half of my books from my first semester of nursing school was, and by the way, your textbooks is gonna be expensive. Like your first semester of nursing school, you're gonna be like, holy shit, I don't know if I can afford this. And let me just remind you that a lot of the stuff you get at the beginning, you'll use during your whole program. So your next semester will probably be like, for me, it was only one book. So just keep that in mind when you're making your budget for what you can spend. So a lot of textbooks have a code in them that you use to type in on their website and you access to um, their online portion or an ebook or qu practice questions and stuff. And a lot of times, A, these are only included in brand new books. And if you get a used book, you'll probably have to buy it directly from the company, which can be expensive. And you'll probably be, it might end up being the same price together as getting a new book. And two, a lot of the times your professors use these programs and are required for your classes. Um, not the textbook part, but the online part. So you kind of have to buy the textbook almost. So, and if you rent the books, you're not guaranteed that you'll get the code. You might, you may not. You probably won't. I'm just going to tell you that. You probably won't get the code if you rent the book. So, question is, do you buy your textbooks or not? I would just go ahead and buy your textbooks and here's why. Buy all your textbooks, it, they don't have to be new. If they come with the code, you might as well get the new ones. Otherwise, you can rent the other ones, save a good, if you rent them, and I'll have like uh, a link to Amazon, um, and pretty much they have like an awesome rental system. Like literally, you can, they're really cheap. You can rent the book, they send it to you in a few days. If you don't have Prime, you can you can get a free six month subscription to Prime as a student. So you might as well just sign up for Prime, get your books in two days. Um, they send you the package. They also like give you the packing slip to send it back for free. And you if you just use the box they send it in, just keep the box for a few months. Just put it in a safe place so you don't lose it or throw it away. Uh, put the book back in there, put the new packing slip on there, take it to wherever you want to ship it from and bam, it's free. It's literally the most convenient rental system I've ever used. I also bought bought almost all of my new textbooks from Amazon because Amazon always has the best deal for textbooks in my opinion. So I would just, so if I gave you a clear plan, buy all your textbooks new, rent the ones that don't have codes. After your semester, if you don't need them anymore, sell them. You'll make a ton of money back anyway. We are done. That was a whole mouthful and probably a lot more information than you needed. But my secret tip is to subscribe to Quick Rescue Force YouTube channel for nursing tips, school guides, studying tips, all that kind of stuff. I know we only have a few videos now, but we're planning on making a lot more videos, um, not just for nursing, but for paramedicine or paramedics, EMTs, military medics, um, all that kind of stuff. So even if you are a nursing student, you can look at a different aspect of it and gain more knowledge that you can use because nursing school doesn't always teach you the method that you end up using in the hospital, depending on what unit you go to. So we can take a breath. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below when you're starting nursing school 
and I hope you have a successful semester and this helps you kind of figure out what you need and what to buy and all that stuff. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Ah!